can't. Jeez. My God. Please stop. I can't take any more. Now that's what I'm talking about. That is how you do an ascendancy revamp. We just got given a few classes, a few ascendancies from the classes that look completely crazy, or at least just way more exciting than some of the previous ones. Got a couple of lackluster ones, but I do want to go over all of them for you guys right now. But just to sum it up for you guys, we just got given uh, news today or you know, previews of the Elementalist, the Deadeye, the Trickster, the Slayer and the Occultist. And a lot of them are actually pretty damn worked over and there's a lot of exciting stuff in them. So I want to go over that right now. So I'll start with the one that was least uh, reworked as such and more just shook up, shaken around, that sort of thing. Uh, for the most part, Slayer is basically the same uh, as what it used to do. A lot of the things are the same, but they've been moved around a bit and it does get a bit awkward. So previously... Um, these two nodes over here, for example, five and six, that's just some stun nodes. They're still just stun nodes, except that now incorporated cannot be stunned in there and taken it away from um, up here, meaning it's a bit less convenient to grab. And you now have 100% increased stun duration on enemies as opposed to full life, low life stuff. I doubt you're ever really going to be taking this stuff anyway. It looks a bit flaccid compared to the rest of the tree. And then to take care of the other little crab leg node, it's a 11 and 12. That's the impact node. Um, still the same area and then still the same area there, except there's no longer a less damage uh, penalty for taking that from your single target to your splash. So that is a lot nicer. But the problem is you're pretty much never going to be taking 5, 6 or 11, 12 anymore because of the way this has been reworked. The juiciest Slayer nodes now are 1 and 2 up here at the top and 8 and 7 up here at the top. So they're the ones that give Slayer the real identity of the class because um, up here they swapped Headsman and Bane of Legends. So that is now the 20% cull over here, which is one of the biggest reasons to go Slayer and one of the nicest things to get. And then Brutal Fervor up here is the one that has life leech effects are not removed at full life. Um, and the increased life leech per second, acting similar as a Vile Pact, and then a bit of damage while leeching. So if you're going to go Slayer, chances are you want this node and you want this node, so you're probably grabbing these four and these four. I'm not sure when you're going to be taking impact anymore, um, or these stun ones just about ever. It's possible, surely, but... The whole reason behind Slayer is to get this life leech effects and not removed at full life at the moment. So unless um, that gets vastly reworked, the life leech mechanics and system, so that Slayer is not that necessary, and it very well could, but if it doesn't, then I'm not sure what you're going to do there anyway. So aside from swapping these around, um, Headsman over here now has cannot take reflected physical damage, which is pretty nice for physical reflect maps, means that you will definitely be able to run those fizz reflect maps. Um, undoubtedly, whereas before you might be able to run them depending on your defenses and how your damage is split. If you're a pure physical character, you now can run those maps, which is a small perk, not particularly exciting, but uh, definitely a little boost there. And Endless Hunger now has you are immune to bleed while leeching, whereas it used to be up there. So it's just a bit of a shake up. And like I said, I'm really not sure what you're going to be doing with Slayer uh, besides these four and these four, unless we do get a substantial leech rework, which is possible. But Slayer still looks really good as always. It's just uh, been changed up a bit and uh, made slightly weirder to take other things, I think. So we'll then move on to some of the bigger reworks, starting with Elementalist. It had a pretty large shakeup, a fairly large rework, and I don't really know what to think about it. Like much of the community from what I've seen so far, it feels kind of weird and we're not too sure if this is supposed to be good or not. Perhaps there are still going to be some um, incoming Ignite changes and buffs with the patch notes or whatever. Uh, if so, then maybe we can still do something with this. Uh, but Ignite does need a significant amount of extra damage or a rework of some kind or some uniques to make it really good. If that happens, maybe this is still a thing. But currently, with the way Ignite is looking at this rework, it's just a bit awkward. So largely it has uh, formed the Ascendancy more into a Golem niche to get quite a lot of golem nodes for elemental golems and all that, which is not something I ever messed around with or really have any intention. And besides that, the only other significant changes you're getting is it now has a Paragon of Calamity, which makes you immune to or cannot take reflected elemental damage, which is nice in some cases, maps especially, uh, a theory, whatever. So that's pretty cool. 0.5% of elemental damage leached as life. That's very nice just to make sure you don't need um, a Warlord's Mark or anything like that. 
it's fairly convenient, so that's not too bad at all. But besides that, there wasn't too much of a shakeup, I don't think. Because if we start with the left-hand side, 11 and 12, that's our shaper of desolation, so that's the conflux stuff. Nothing really changed there, it's still conflux, it's still gonna be giving you the rotational um, status elements and all that. And they're okay, but without the ignite, it's nothing too special. And then we move into 13, 14, which is beacon of ruin. So not much has changed there because we still have a 12 radius of the prolif. Uh, Ignite still kind of sucks. Chill from your hits always slows by at least 10%. It's okay. 20% increased effective non-damaging ailments on enemies. So that's just slightly better for your um, shock and freeze and chill, which is still not bad. And then shocks from your hits always increase damage taken by at least 20%, which is fairly strong, I think, if you do get into that level of um, shocking things and going against the end game bosses, a flat 20% is pretty big in the end, but there's not too much else exciting there happening, and you do have to reliably shock things still. As long as things are gonna get shocked, you will have a good 20% extra damage, because otherwise, uh, without this node, you're shocking hardly ever against the big end game bosses for any um, substantial amount of increased damage. So 20% could be viable there, but not really sure what to pair it with at this point. Maybe 9, 10, 7, 8. So 9, 10 is going to be Pendulum of Destruction, which kind of kept its awkward rotational thing. So you get 75% area for 5 seconds, then 75% early damage for 5 seconds, which is okay, but those rotational buffs feel kind of weird and overall not that desirable, but it's okay. And then 11, uh, not 11, 12, 7, 8 is now Mastermind of Discord. So we're looking at, instead of it just being 25% based off of the skill you used and kind of being a bit weird that way, you now have damage penetrates 25 cold while affected by Herald of Ice, 25 fire with Herald of Ash, and 25 lightning with Herald of Thunder. You have increased effect of Herald's on you and 25 reduced mana reservation of Herald skills. So that can be kind of nice, it can be okay, but it is also kind of awkward. Uh, for pure, some pure um, elemental equilibrium builds, this is gonna make things really weird. For some builds that want the fire pen, Herald of Ash doesn't really work too well for you because it almost does nothing unless you're purely fizz based which is a blade fall or um, EK or a blade vortex. And otherwise, I'm really not sure what to think about that because you do have to reserve mana. It can be potentially worse than the previous iteration of this. And ultimately, it's probably going to be a worse version of Inquisitor anyway, if Inquisitor doesn't really get changed. It doesn't really scream any reason to take this over Inquisitor still for the elemental based builds. Uh, maybe if you factor in the Ellie Leached as life, you could get something happening. I think overall it's still a viable ascendancy, just I don't see much reason to take it over Inquisitor. So we have to wait and see what happens with the Inquisitor, because maybe he gets nerfed, maybe something else changes there, but it is at the moment still not terribly exciting in that regard. And then we do have the Golem skills, so 3 and 4 um, happen to change Legion of the Primordial. Your elemental Golems are immune to Ellie damage, that's still a thing. 20% increased damage for each, uh, for each summoned Golem, so that can be a decent little boost. 25 increased effect of buffs granted by your Golems for each summoned Golem. So if you have, let's say, four of your Golems, you get the previous 100% increased buff effect and you can summon one additional. If you go into Elemancer as well, you can summon another additional. So that's three baseline right there. 20% uh, increased golem damage for each golem you have summoned. So stacking those, that's quite a lot of uh, damage for your golems if you stack a lot of golems, which I think is a popular thing to do and uh, people do like doing that. I have no expertise there. Cannot be chilled or frozen with ice, cannot be ignited with fire, cannot be shocked with a lightning summoned. So if you have all three different types, yeah, that could be cool, uh, just for convenience sake, but it's kind of a neither here nor there passive. I don't think that really incentivizes you to take it for any reason. So it's just a little bit of a perk. Overall, I'm really not sure what to think about Elementalist anymore. Um, it wasn't as big of a shakeup or as good of a buff as some of the others received, so it really hasn't got me too excited to play Elementalist, and it'll probably be at this stage one of the last ones I try uh, compared to all the others anyway. Now let's start off with one of the three that actually is fairly exciting for today's reveals, and that is Deadeye. So both uh, all Deadeye trickster and occultist has me actually pretty excited to make those classes or ascendancies because they do have a fairly substantial rework and they feel really well tailored to their uh, respective purposes. So starting with Deadeye, I'll go from uh, the little nodes to the big nodes. 
The little nodes, one and two over here, are basically the same. So it's Rupture, still has the bleed stuff, still has the multi, uh, gives you a bit of extra crit. The big change here is gain 30 life when you hit a bleeding enemy. So if you actually do have uh, a lot of attacks, a lot of fast attacking, then that can be actually pretty useful for life gain on hit. So it doesn't necessarily have to be bows or anything. You could still do stuff like a blade flurry or a molten strike, uh, just to throw some things out there. But your barrage, your tornado shots, uh, with enough attacks and enough attack speed, 30 life gain on hit hitting a bleeding enemy is pretty substantial and a very nice bit of sustain. So it's got a bit more interesting for those two points. Not sure if I'll ever take it though, but we'll move on to seven and eight here, which is um, gathering wins. Now this shit is really interesting. You get a thousand evasion rating while you have tailwind. If you used a skill recently, you and nearby allies have tailwind. So just by using a skill, you get a four second buff uh, called Tailwind, which says uh, Tailwind makes you 10% faster. So it's basically a 10% more uh, attack speed, cast speed, move speed, I believe, buff across the board against your character. So it's not just an increase, it's a multiplier, meaning you do get 10% faster uh, to everything and it's fairly useful. Now that lasts four seconds and 10% increased effective Tailwind on you for each skill you've used recently up to 100%. So you can potentially double that buff uh, if you attack or use 10 skills within the four seconds and continuously use those 10 skills, getting that extra buff. So it could be 20% faster to everything, which is pretty goddamn fast. Pair that with the fact that you get a thousand evasion rating while you have Tailwind. It feels like a really sort of unique thing to a Deadeye and actually makes me want to build into it because a thousand evasion rating is nothing to sneeze at to start with. 10% um, attack and faster attack and uh, move and all of that is actually nothing to sneeze at either and seems really nice for the two points you take to get there as well as a bit of accuracy and projectile damage. So for two points, that seems really interesting and cool to build around. And then we go into 13-14, uh, which is just the um, pierce nodes that we did have before, except now it's just projectile pierces three additional targets, have 100% increased crit chance against targets they pierce, which is okay, and then pierce all targets that are nearby just to guarantee that you're piercing things. Uh, these feel a little weird, underwhelming to me. Doubt, I'd ever, ever, uh, sorry, doubt I'm ever really going to take those considering everything else that's available. So then we have 11 and 12, which is projectile speed and uh, projectile damage attack speed, pretty good. But fast and deadly over here is actually pretty nuts. So 10 attack speed, 30 proj damage, not bad. Accuracy rating is doubled. Now, bow characters typically do have a fair chunk of um, attack rating, uh, accuracy rating already. Doubling that means you're going to be pretty close to your accuracy cap uh, without really trying too hard at all. So that's a very nice node there just for your pure accuracy, which gives you a you know, nicer chance to crit as well. And then 100% increased blink arrow and mirror arrow cooldown recovery speed. And I really do like this one. So blink arrow is a good tool for you to get out of things as a uh, bow character. It's a nice little travel tool, all of that. And uh, having the cooldown on that thing is super quality of life and I think should make playing a dead eye with a bow character pretty exciting and rather fun to blink around all the time and use your uh, evasive maneuvers and dodge mechanics to your advantage pretty handily. So that's one I'm fairly excited to take as well as the uh, Tailwind. So those two I think are going to be pretty close to staples in my builds for a bow character as a dead eye. And then we move on to your last four points, which you can split either one way or the other. So three and four is far shot, which is um, as it was before, projectile attacks gain damage as they tra uh, travel further, dealing up to 30% more attack damage with hits. Uh, that's the same as it's been, but it's still good and uh, does incentivize you standing further back rather than being point blank uh, and having to take point blank. So that is still a nice node. And then you split off either one way or the other for what is pretty close to what they used to be, the chain side of things or the uh, additional arrow or additional projectile area and accuracy. You can take both if you really want, but to me it feels like you're going to be going one or the other because I really do want uh, both of the cool things like um, gathering winds and fast and deadly. Either way, the chain one right now is now ricochet, skills chain an additional time, same as before, but now projectiles deal 10% more damage for each remaining chain. So that is quite a lot um, if you end up stacking a few chains and not just the one chain. And when you 
have the far shot bonus uh, multiplied into that as well. When you're shooting far away, your chains become pretty powerful and it's a good clear thing for fairly weak characters to begin with. So I think that will help uh, your early game characters out and Deadeye really does scream much more of a beginning uh, starter league sort of character for the bow build. And interestingly enough, that should also work for a Magma Rob character. So maybe Gloomfang won't be quite as necessary. Chain an additional time and then 10% more damage on each remaining chain, which stacks up quite high if you have seven chains, seven, eight chains for your Magma Rob. But there's not too much else on the tree for Magma Rob. That is definitely um, something to keep in mind when you build this shit. And then five and six is endless munitions, same as it's always been, but it is or always has been fairly nice. 200 accuracy rating, 50 area, and skills fire an additional projectile. So that's the main bread and butter of your barrage, getting an additional projectile. And previously, for the past league or two, I've been looking at Scion for those types of builds because uh, Scion still gets an additional projectile, but it also then gets another ascendancy, and it's felt typically a bit better than Deadeye. Uh, purely. Nowadays I'm looking at this and I'm thinking endless munitions, you get the additional projectile, but then you can get some other really cool shit on the tree too, and it's probably going to be much more desirable for me for a Wanda or for a uh, bow character to play Deadeye than it was to play Scion at this stage, and shit, it's pretty exciting. I may even start with a bow character for the league. I've got a lot to think about for what character I can do, but Deadeye, I think, step in the right direction, gives bow characters a real flavor of their own, and I think this is um, a good example of a strong rework. We then have the Occultist, which is another one I'm pretty excited to uh, look into and maybe try for a few characters, and it's pretty much just the previous Occultist on steroids. So everything got a slight buff or a little rework, and it looks really good and strong for what it's supposed to do. So we'll start with uh, one and two, which were the previous power charge nodes. You now still get a, uh, additional power charge. That's the same. Instead of power charge on crit, you get gain a power charge after you spend a total of 200 mana. And there are plenty of builds that can do that very easily. So that's pretty nice. And it should be good um, for a lot of these types of builds, a lot of the spellcasters, to stack 200 mana uh, and get your power charges pretty quickly. Shouldn't be that hard, especially before a boss fight, for example. You could now have sort of good control of your own power charges as you see fit. And then 5% area per power, 5% spell per power, which is a nice little buff if you got six, seven, eight power charges uh, for area and for the spell damage too, just a nice little buff there. Uh, going into the other seven and eight, that's energy shield and uh, void beacon. You still get a bit of energy shield, bit of chaos damage. Uh, now it's still nearby enemies have minus 20 chaos resist, but nearby enemies also have 100% reduced life regeneration rate, which isn't huge for a lot of things in the game, but there are a few that have uh, strong life regen and especially it seems to be a uh, running theme with a lot of league mechanics. A lot of uh, random new league monsters have shitloads of life regen. So that could come in uh, handy for some of those things. If Bestiary League has some asshole beasts that have 10,000 life regen just randomly, which, you know, I wouldn't put it past happening. Could be nice. Decent for Hall of Grandmasters, shit like that. Nothing too game changing, but a bit of a nice perk there too. Then we have three, four, five, six. Now those were the previous um, chaos damage, explosion, and um, curse centered nodes, I suppose you'd call them. So three and four is 5% increased effect of your curses. So that's new and a nice little buff. And then profane bloom, your curses can apply to hex proof enemies. That's pretty insane. That's really nice for your curse based characters that have two or three curses. So that replaces the need for ever having, um, yeah, the need for ever needing having Cosprey's um, chest, which has the hex proof um, penetration stuff which is uh, just really nice to be able to do the hexproof maps and hexproof rares because uh, it's a bit of a kick in the nuts when you are centered around um, curses and something is immune to those curses. So that's a very nice node to have. And now cursed enemies you or your minions kill have a 25% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their max life as chaos damage. Now this is a very nice node for certain builds to increase your clear speed. Notoriously, it's been kind of shit for your essence drain characters because it does stop the uh, explosions, uh, your cascading from your uh, essence drain. But I think it's overall a good clear speed buff uh, for a lot of builds, even for your essence drains. It can feel really nice and it can help in a lot of cases to uh, explode tough packs of enemies 
like let's say Chimera adds or Shaper adds to uh, get a bit more extra damage and clear speed. And it's just now 25% chance instead of 20, so it's a bit more reliable, but uh, overall nothing too huge changing there. It's mostly the hexproof immunity that matters. We then do have another 5% increase effect your curses and Malediction over here now has enemies have additional curse, one additional curse, or can have, so that's the same. 15% increased effect of your curses, so total with the two nodes and that one is 25% increased effect, which is uh, pretty large if you stack with a lot of other things um, from the tree, from Helm Enchants, all of that. You can, in the end, get some pretty decent uh, boss curse effectiveness, uh, even though they originally have 80% less, you can, let's say, get close to 100% increased effectiveness at this stage, I'd say. And that means that they're only 60% less effective now, which isn't amazing, but hey, it's something. And it means your curses aren't complete trash against uh, bosses. But for the most part, it also means that during a uh, normal map clearing, your curses are going to be super strong. And things like temp chains become really insane defensive multipliers for your build and uh, should make your essence drains, for example, very reliable uh, characters to survive against these endgame contents. Uh, in any case, you then also have when you kill an enemy for each curse on that enemy, gain 8% of non cast damage as extra cast damage for 4 seconds, and enemies you curse have Malediction, which is enemies with Malediction deal 10 reduced damage, which is a pretty nice uh, defensive buff, and 10% increased damage taken, I think. So take 10% increased damage, which was moved from over here. Uh, number four used to have increased uh, damage taken by 10% if you curse something. So it just got slightly redirected and then buffed to have a damage reduction um, thing on the enemy so they hit you less hard. And then lastly, we have Wicked Ward and Vile Bastion. Uh, so Wicked Ward, I don't think has changed at all. Just 100 to max energy shield and not interrupted damage if recharge began recently, which is... Uh, Pretty good for energy shield still, that's totally fine. And then 11 and 12, we have Vile Bastion. So Vile Bastion now has 150 to max energy shield, which it previously didn't have. So that's a free 150 to max energy on top of the 100 you get from Wicked Ward, which is pretty huge, 250 overall. 1% of energy shield um, regenerated per second for each enemy you or your minions have killed recently, up to 30%. Um, so that's previously it was 0.5, now it's 1% and cannot be stunned while you have energy shield, which means any low life, any CI character will just be immune to stun unless you're dead, which in case um, you don't really care if you're getting stunned anyway. So that is uh, just going to eliminate the need for an IF Chiula, for example, uh, but that's only if you go all the way through here. It's a really nice quality of life for a CI or a low life character though to get this much energy shield, to have this much sustain when you're mapping and killing things. Let's say you kill 30 monsters, uh, you know, one pack of monsters, 30% regen, that's fucking huge. And that's going to make you very um, tanky and sustainable against um, a lot of map things and a lot of map clearing in general. But on top of that, huge ES and then cannot be stunned, which frees up your next slot in a lot of these builds that you previously did need to use a next slot for. Overall, this is a pretty solid rework. It's just a straight buff in a lot of things, but uh, Forbidden Power is fairly nice um, for a lot of the power charge things that you previously could do with a cultist now makes it just a little bit sweeter, I think. And overall, I think it's just uh, hasn't really changed the identity of the class. It's just made it stronger and more competitive and should be a strong contender for a lot of these Essence Drain or Chaos builds in general. And then I believe I saved the best for last, and that is Trickster with all these changes. And what the fuck is this shit, right? Like, by God, talk about a rework. I don't expect some of this to make it to live because it's pretty crazy, but let's go through it anyway and see what we think, right? So I'll start with the little nodes here, the 6, the 7, the 8, the 9. Uh, 6 and 7, that is attack speed, frenzy duration, and swift killer. So swift killer, I think that's roughly the same as it's always been, which is pretty nice. Probably one of the nicer aspects of the current trickster. Gain the max frenzy and max power. That's pretty good for, you know, 4 power, 4 frenzy. Good sustain on kill, and you should be able to work into um, some tricky ways to have it sustained during boss fights yourself as well. 5% increased damage per power and frenzy. Overall, that's still a really nice note. 8 and 9, that hasn't changed much either. That's Weave the Arcane, so 25% increased mana. Movement skills cost no mana. 
20% increased attack and cast speed if you've used a move, uh, movement skill recently, 20% chance to recover 10% of max mana when you use a skill, which is a, a very nice node, fairly reliable um, to get a lot of extra mana back that way, and then 6% reduced damage taken for 4 seconds after spending 200 mana. Really depends on what skill you're going to be using as to whether or not that's worth it, but it can be a decent node still, and not a lot has changed in that one. I think it's been kind of comboed. We then come into the what are fairly insane um, energy shield and evasion nodes. So some of the previous energy shield and evasion nodes got kind of reworked and kind of combined, and now we have these four here, starting with Ghost Dance. So Ghost Dance is 40% increased attack and cast speed if energy shield recharge has started recently. Don't know how useful or practical that is in a lot of situations, but 40% attack and cast speed can be really nice. Uh, if you, you know, utilize that when it happens. 20% more chance to evade while on full energy shield. So if you're a hybridish character or just a pure full energy shield, you can make some pretty good use of that 20% more chance to evade. 10% chance to dodge attacks and spell damage um, while you have energy shield. So a bunch more dodge and um, towards attacks and spell damage when you have energy shield, which should be up a lot of the time, especially if you see CI, low life, that sort of thing and 10% increased movement skill Y of energy shield, which is just a, a nice bit of extra uh, movement speed, probably for your shield charges, that sort of thing. And then we get into the actual crazy shit, escape artist. So you have five to evasion rating per one maximum energy shield on a helmet, which currently I'd say you're looking at a 250, 300 ES helmet on the high end, right? Um, even a vertex, which already has a lot of uh, evasion to begin with. Uh, Let's say you get a 300, an extra 1500 evasion rating to begin with based off of your helm slot. That's a lot of evasion. So the hybrid evasion and ES has truly been brought to life with this side of the tree of the ascendancy here. Just from the helm slot there, that is going to be a lot of extra evasion. But on the other hand, you also have plus one to max energy shield per six evasion rating on a body armor. Now, if you're looking at a 2400 evasion chest, which isn't too uncommon, especially amongst some of the uniques, uh, like a Queen of the Forest, a Hari Zaya, stuff like that, or even just a solid hybrid chest, that's what you're looking at, 400, 400 bonus uh, max energy shield. So you can trade, uh, treat a good, strong 2400 evasion chest as also having 400 energy shield on it, which is uh, just a crazy hybrid chest in general, right? Or you could have a really strong hybrid chest that has 1200, um, let's say just 1200 en uh, evasion rating and something like 400 energy shield already as now being a pure 600 energy shield chest with the additional evasion. So there's a lot you can do with this. There's going to be quite a lot of crazy uh, chest combos you can run or just pure evasion chest stacking shitloads of evasion and then also getting a bunch of max energy shield from that so the hybrid character there should be really strong defensively for the um, dodge evasion and energy shields and then on top of that you cannot be stunned if you've taken uh, if you haven't been hit recently sorry so the first hit that something's going to hit you with cannot stun you, which is pretty nice and can synergize well with our uh, Brian King Ascendancy. And then 8% reduced damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. So those first um, initial hits coming into a boss fight are going to be stun immune and a bit of reduced damage taken too. Overall, that side is really strong for uh, evasion for the... Um, and energy shield as well, but it's also really fun and interesting to build around and I think that's a really cool side of the tree at the moment. And now we get to what looks to be a pretty busted side of things. So this is the first real, at least as far as I can recall, uh, way that an ascendancy points system has been linked up. So you can go either way and then meet in the middle for the uh, matching points down here. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4 and also 10, 11 and then five, four, whatever the fuck's going on there. But start with one and two. Harness the void. Yeah, we're harnessing some goddamn void here. Your hits have 20% chance to gain 50% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage, 15% chance to gain 100%, 
of non-chaos as chaos and 10% chance to gain 200 of non-chaos as chaos. Now, if this works the way we currently think it does and they stack and it's extra chaos based off of all of your damage, so your original fizz, your original, uh, which then can be converted to elemental, which can do other stuff, uh, we might have some insanely broken shit in the forms of Glacial Cascade, uh, your Doomfletch Bow, you know, blade vortexes with conversions, all kinds of broken ass shit, because uh, I'm going to trust the fine people at Reddit and someone calculated this to be roughly 45% more uh, chaos damage based off of your non-chaos if you stack all the hits up in that manner. And that's basically better than a berserker with no downside as well as getting all this other cool shit. And it's just an insane amount of extra chaos damage. So when I said maybe there could be a competitor for um, Assassin for Poison. Well, this looks like it could compete. Looks like it doesn't even need Poison. It's just gonna fuck shit up. I don't know what to really say else, what else to say about this. If it works the way it currently works and if it doesn't get changed, I think it's gonna be fairly broken because currently the way it works, if you have 100% Fizz, you're gonna get 45% uh, additional Chaos off of that. You then convert 100% of that to Elemental, you get 45% additional off of that Elemental. And if you do some other funky conversions like um, some Elemental to some other Elemental, so Cold to Fire for example, you get additional conversion and um, Chaos damage off of that. So it ends up just double, triple, quadruple, whatever dipping, and you get huge amounts of extra chaos. That's currently how it works. If this node is going to work that way, or if the numbers currently check out and stick this way, this is going to be pretty crazy. So let's just leave that alone and see what happens, because chances are probably going to be nerfed, or uh, the way these things stack and work is going to be changed. But looking at it, yeah, insane. Prolonged pain is then 20% increased skill effect duration. That's pretty damn good. 10% uh, reduced damage taken from damage over time, which is neither here nor there, not too many damage over time things that are that threatening in the game. 20% increased poison duration, a fairly nice buff to your poison there, and 15% more damage over time, which is really good for, um, yeah, poison, uh, really good for Scorching Ray, really good for your Essence Drain. It's a pretty solid node overall there, so you will likely be taking that if you're doing any of that sort of build, Poison, Scorching Ray, Essence Drain, and um, possibly going through these down here, which is 10 and 11, and that is Patient Reaper. 50% increased damage over time, which is just an increase, not a more, and when you already have like three, 400% increased damage over time, uh, that's just a nice little extra, but it's nothing too huge. You then have recover 2% of max life on kill, which as I uh, mentioned in the previous assassin thing, 2% uh, on kill, that's pretty huge, especially when you're killing a lot of things. So that's gonna be a very nice bunch of sustain for your character while mapping. 2% of energy shield on kill, similar sort of thing. 4% of max mana on kill, means you really won't be worrying about mana a lot of the time and synergize as well with mind over um, matter, which is uh, something you can take very cleanly for a lot of Scorching Ray and Essence Drain builds. And then 70% increased recovery rate of life, mana, and energy shield if you've killed an affected enemy by your damage over time recently, which previously existed. It's a really nice node to get your regen up and um, kind of situational because you'd have to kill something uh, recently but overall should be up a lot of the time and is a really nice regen node paired with everything else that's happening on this um, ascendancy. It's a pretty crazy ascendancy and you could make just about anything a trickster now I think and there's a lot of possibilities with this ascendancy so this is a big rework it's just huge huge and there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of things you should do. If nothing gets nerfed, if this is comes into it as it is, maybe we're all making tricks just to start with. It'd be hard not to. But like I said, I'm fairly excited about a few of the others as well. The reworks that uh, came into a dead eye, for example, is um, has me excited as well and makes me want to make some of these characters. So these are the right kinds of reworks, I think, and in the right direction. Your chieftains, your tricksters, your dead eyes, those, sh those things are super exciting and uh, just that's what I want to see in an Ascendancy re rework. Something that makes you want to make that character and try it out. And I think so far, so good. We should be pretty occupied with a lot of different Ascendancies and builds uh, that we've been um, currently been playing and can now try different things with. Escape Artist by itself, I think, should be a lot of fun for the uh, Evasion Energy Shield 
kind of hybrid meta. Should be fun. In any case, I'd say that's all I've got for these uh, Ascendancy reworks. Pretty fun stuff, pretty good things to look forward to. Hope the video wasn't too long and too boring. Thank you very much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.